Uh, let's talk about my alma mater, uh, Syracuse yeah. University, Greg Robinson. I was very excited. Here's a guy who, what, what, what coach, 30 years maybe he was around in the business, oh, yeah. never a head coach. He finally made the jump. That's a leap of faith when you are a coordinator, a defensive coordinator, uh, NFL level, uh, college level. Uh, he has got a, a huge, huge reputation as a great defensive coordinator. He took that leap. He, uh, you know, it's a, it's a leap of faith. Uh, it, he's he's starting out slow. He's struggling in the Big East, uh, but I think it's one of those things where I'm willing to give a guy four years, especially on the college level. Do you think he can turn Syracuse around? Yes, I do. You know that Greg. Re I was just one of his first recruits that he had as a, as a young coach. Really? Uh, he went to Bakersfield College. <laughs> he went to Bakersfield College. I went. I went to Bakersfield College. He was at the University of Pacific at the time. He was responsible for getting me to UCLA. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, to, what, you're going to say everything you did about Coach Coughlin. All of a sudden, what happens if Greg turns around, wins a national championship next year? You know, that's yep. how crazy sports is. And yep. I hope he does. Yeah, I He's a good too. enough coach to do it. Hey, 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 he came on my show. Anytime a coach comes on my show, he immediately is a good guy. Doesn't yeah. matter what happens <laughs> after that. Especially uh, the circus, right? <laughs> exactly. That's um, why you love Coach Coughlin too. Circus, right? <laughs> exactly. Another, uh, and you want to talk about a great staff. Uh, and this got a lot of publicity for the yeah. Super Bowl, but that 90s Giant staff. I yeah. mean, you're talking, what was Charlie Weiss was on that staff, yeah. Belichick was on that staff, Coughlin was on that staff, Parcells was on that staff. That staff was just Romeo, too. Uh, Romeo was on that staff. That staff was just absolutely yeah. loaded. This is going to be a difficult question. That's why I put you across the board here. I don't want you to jump across yeah. the board, but I want you to give the coaches' I'm perspective on this. Okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to just mention, I think it was deplorable what the Meta organization did to Willie Randolph. To allow him to travel across the country with his ball club, with, with speculation abound about his job, and then to fire him at like 3 o'clock uh, in the morning Eastern time and then and make him fly back, I thought was, was, was pretty sad. On the, To me, that tells me the Mets are afraid of, of, of the media because they did it after right. uh, hours, basically. They wanted that to, to slide under the, 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 the radar at night. We, it, coaches get a lot of bad press, especially the ones in college. Uh, Saban. Saban jumps a lot. He moves from job to job. Parcells moved from job to job. A lot of people felt he always left organizations holding the bag. A lot of people are upset in Atlanta uh, with Petrino. He, they feel he, he left the organization uh, holding the bag. And I do agree with that. However, and this goes in radio too, they never give you warning when they're going to fire you, though. So, you know, it can go both ways. Everybody says, well, you should have gave, the coach should have gave warning and he shouldn't have t signed the contract and he shouldn't have took the money. But I also see the coach's side of it that when they decide to fire you guys, they don't you say, hey, in a, in next year I'm going to fire you, so you may want to start looking for a new job. Give us the coach's perspective. If another job comes up, You've got your responsibility where you're at, but you also have a family and a career to look out for. I think the toughest part for a coach is when you do have that family, you know, because you want to keep your kids in schools and be settled and all that. When I, Rick Newsile was, Rick Newsile was, was the last guy I talked to. I talked to Rick before I walked in Terry Donahue's door and got fired at UCLA. So, you know, so, I think, so there's some history there. That's the only time I got yeah. really fired. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, I'm a pro. If you ever want to know what the, know. What, what the cues are, I'll get, yeah. it's it's when no, all of a sudden everybody's just kind of like looking the other way when you're walking the halls. Yeah. That means they all know you're leaving. Yeah. Uh, and they can't make eye contact with you. Uh, so that it, it, it's it, devastating for it the is. families, you know. And it, but the, you got to re relocate schools, and, yep. and Kathy did a great job, you know, with the girls. And she was more concerned about the girls, you know, making sure the girls were settled and, mm -hmm. and, than herself, you know. And and, they sh and that's that's the most important part. You got to have a strong woman. You got to have Absolutely. a strong wife to be able to keep the families together in our profession. And, and that leads me to, to my final question: Is you, you mentioned your your beautiful beautiful wife, and you've got two great daughters. Now they're grown up and, and married and on their own, correct? That's right. Yeah, they're, um, both, they're both California girls. They had they both had jobs where they could have came back to New York. Mm -hmm. They've been here all you know their grandparents and their we back here, so they knew what New York was like, and I asked them if they wanted to come back when we came back here, and they, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's all that no, you can't surf in February. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, so they decided to stay yeah. uh, out west. How difficult was that, though, and again, putting yourself in a position of a father? You you know you need, you, you, you know you want to make the money, and you want to make the best decision for yeah. you and your family, and put yourself in the best position, but you also don't want to drag your family yeah. all across the country, just as a radio DJ doesn't necessarily necessarily want to drag uh, his family up and down the radio dial. How difficult is that? Did that come into play in every one of your decisions? Um, yeah, there was a big part of it, you know, but then you have to move professionally at the same time. And there was, 
And I had pretty good stretches at places. I was very fortunate, you know, to be able to have blocks of time. Uh, and, uh, you know, we moved, Kathy and I have moved like 38 times in our marriage, and we've been married 35 wow. years, you know, so. <laughs> but a lot of it was in the Marine Corps, too. Sure, you know, so that's true. You know, so that's, you know, they think they're part of it. Absolutely. It's been great that way. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I think the biggest thing is, is that the kids are resilient. And I think they're, you know, they're, our, our kids are, are, you know, 34 and 30 now. And the thing is that they, I think it's helped them in their mm -hmm. lives because they, they're so diverse and they can socialize with anybody. and. And it's, it's helped build their character, and, mm -hmm. and they're both real successful, and we're both proud of them. Absolutely. And my, and my dad who is a uh, is a uh, truck driver, and he is a huge uh, New York Giants fan. And I told you the story off the air that he actually yeah. got to deliver once uh, to Giants Stadium, got to deliver some uh, some hot dogs. He was driving refrigerated at the time. Uh, but uh, he is from a small town, uh, such kind of a, a this as Bainbridge on the other side of Binghamton. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, very, I don't want to, na naive could be the word. And sometimes we would, uh, we would go to New York City, and uh, my mom didn't like me going with him when I was a kid on the 18 wheeler but sometimes we would and I and and it was always fun to see the skyscrapers but I'll tell you this I always hated it when because if you have ne ever never been to New York City it, it, it is made up very well because streets go one way and then the other streets go the other way so it is kind of a grit but sometimes my father would make a mistake and turn on a wrong way and there's nothing worse than having to back up a 48-foot trailer yeah. on, like, 57th Street. Yeah, no so who, do, who do you think got the job of having to go out and try to stop the traffic <laughs> while he's backing back out on the 57th <laughs> Street? Here, here. <laughs> exactly. So, so sometimes my father uh, believed in humanity, uh, and so he would, always, he would come home, uh, and it would always be funny. Like one time he was down in the city, uh, and this guy gave him just an absolute deal. He just couldn't. He just couldn't. Uh, it couldn't resist. I mean, it was it was too good uh, not to take. It was a it was a TV VCR combo for like twenty dollars. The guy said, "All you gotta do is give me your money. I'm gonna run upstairs. I'm gonna come right back. I'm gonna be back in five minutes, and you're gonna have your TV combo." He thought, "Well, that's a great Christmas present for uh, you know uh, the kids. I'll get them the the, the the well." Needless to say, the guy a never came back downstairs, and he didn't ever see his uh, twenty bucks. The next one he did was he bought a VCR for ten bucks. He he didn't check it when he purchased it from the guy. He gets in the truck, he opens up the VCR, and it's uh, about. Two or three bricks uh, that are in the box. <laughs> so, so he is a little naive, and 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 I found this happening to myself last night. I was down in Elmira at the Bulldogs game, and after the game, uh, I went to the to the to the gentleman's room, and I come out, and this guy's there, and he's asking me, "Are you from the radio station?" Of course, we were broadcasting, so I think you could tell by the headset that that's probably what I was doing. And I, I said, yeah. And he's like, oh, man, you did a great job. Is there any way I could get you get your autograph? And I said, yeah. And he's like, oh, man, I, I don't have anything. Do you have, like, do you have like a, a bill on you or something? I'm like, well, yeah, okay. So I signed the bill, and I give it to him. He's like, oh, my buddy, he's a huge fan of yours, too. Can you just sign another bill? And so after about 520s, I said, wait a minute. Wait. I said, oh, wait a minute. I, what, what are you, am I going to get that money back? Oh, no, man, he's got your autograph signed. I will give him back to you sometime, though. After you sign something else, I'll get your I'll get your phone number sometime. So I got. Have you ever been? Ed, has anybody ever approached you on the street or any great deal that you thought was too good to be true in New York? Uh, Kathy doesn't give me that big of a problem. <laughs> She's a smart woman. Let me tell you, my dad would walk in with his head hanging low, saying, uh, "About the check, uh, <laughs> I bought you this brand new bedroom set. I just don't have it though. The guy didn't come downstairs with it. It'll honey. be delivered soon. <laughs> It'll be delivered." Soon. Uh, and the one thing I bought in New York City, went to Chinatown once, it was a great portable phone, it had all the functions in it, I get home, the only problem was the 1, 3, 5, and 9 button didn't work. But other than that, anybody's number uh, that didn't have those numbers in it, it worked like a charm. So uh, it was a good purchase. So uh, listen coach, I appreciate it, you've been a great sport. Um, Thank you very much.